The live servers for PUBG on Xbox One and PS4 are scheduled to go down tonight at 10pm Pacific, and they should be down for about 3 hours, but once they come back up we'll be getting Season 6 and everything that's included, and I'm the most excited I've been for a PUBG patch in a very long time. Most of the stuff in this patch was on the test server over the last couple weeks, so if you were able to check that out, you got a taste of what was to come with this update, which is patch 6.1. There's two huge items being added with this patch and a lot of quality of life things and changes along the way. So let's get into it, let's dive in and see what all is included. Now before we get started, make sure to like the video if you end up finding it useful and subscribe to stay up to date on everything that I publish. So let's start off with the brand new map, a 2 by 2 kilometer island off the coast of Northern Africa. And it goes by the name of Karakin. Now you might have heard Karakin before, I've even said that on my channel before I knew the correct pronunciation. Or even Karakin, but it is in fact Karakin. And being 2x2, two two, it's a quarter of the size of the previous smallest map, Sanak. The terrain will remind you of Miramar, and in my opinion, that's a good thing. I like the outside battles, and I think the terrain of Karakin and Miramar allow for some nice sniper battles. But it's not just a Miramar copy, it's definitely unique, so once you get out and try it for yourself, you'll see what I mean. And being such a small map, it doesn't have the maximum 100 players in every lobby. It actually maxes out at 64. And I just did a video on this yesterday saying that Karakin is probably going to be the easiest map to get a win on because your odds are just that much greater and you really don't have to survive very long to find yourself in a top 10 situation. There are only 6 named locations, but there are a lot of small compounds all throughout the map. And a very unique thing to Karakin are the tunnels. And in order to get in those tunnels, brings another unique item, which is the Sticky Bomb. Now, Sticky Bombs are basically C4, but they're not manually detonated. They blow up in about 5 seconds, and yes, they can knock or kill enemy players, but the main benefit of carrying Sticky Bombs is to breach walls, floors, and ceilings. Certain buildings do not have doors. They will only be accessible if you blow a hole in one of the exposed brick walls. Other buildings will have doors and these little breach points so that if somebody's holding down a door and you know they're camping there, you can breach in another location, breach into the building, and take them out that way. But the biggest drive to find these sticky bombs are the tunnels. There are bunkers spread out throughout the whole map, and if you see a red flag on one of the bumpers that means that it has a breachable floor that you can actually go into. Once you breach the floor, you can go in and there's better loot underground. But beware, you can hear these sticky bombs go off from pretty far away, and players will know that you're going for that high quality loot. So it's fair to say that sticky bombs are a big thing on Karakin. Plus there's the fact that they replace grenades. There are no frag grenades on this map. You can still find molotovs, smokes, and stuns, but you will not find a frag on Karakin. And to me, in my opinion, that's a plus, that's not a negative. Yeah, it is nice to have a frag, and it's nice to make that perfect nade throw when somebody's hiding behind cover just to force them out or kill them. But at the same time, knowing that nobody on the map has frag grenades, you can adjust your playstyle and not have to worry about the most overpowered thing in the game. Another unique thing to the map are the black zones. Black zones show up as a purple circle on your mini-map, and once that circle shows, you'll hear sirens go off if you're in the area, and that's your warning to get out of a building if you're in that area as soon as humanly possible. Because if you don't, you run the risk of getting blown up and destroyed along with the building. Karakin is the first PUBG map to take on full total building destruction, and the black zones are what deliver that. Black zones start almost as soon as you jump out of the plane, and they go until the very end of the game. So if you're trying to take cover in a building, just know that maybe throughout the match, that building won't always be there, and you might have to leave. The black zone does damage you a little bit if you're outside the building and you're close enough to the blast, but I don't think it's going to kill you unless you're inside. The loot is not completely destroyed if the building is a single story building. If it's a two story, the second floor loot I think gets destroyed and the first floor loot will still remain. My squad and I had an absolute blast playing this map on the PTS. The loot is not as good as everyone wants it to be. There are problems finding sights, healing, armor. But soon after the PC version of the game received update 6.1, they received an update to the loot on Karakin, greatly increasing all of those items that I mentioned. We interrupt this broadcast to bring you a public service announcement. Yes, we just received word that Karakin will actually get the loot increase that PC got. This includes an increase to 2 times, 3 times, and 4 times scopes. Increased healing boost items available above ground. Also an increase to snipers and DMRs above ground. And they modified the ratio of total snipers and DMR muzzle attachments due to increased spawn rate of those weapons. Along with this, they decreased the number of melee weapons, canted sights, and magazine attachments, and removed the sawed off from Karakin altogether. As always, make sure to keep it tuned here at Boris15's YouTube channel for all the latest information. Back to you. 
All right, thanks Boris, let's continue. And the fact that we're getting the loot increase on the first go of Karakin is gonna make a huge difference. I think it's gonna be a big plus for the map on console on the live servers. So the next huge thing that's added with this patch is the new vehicle that spawns on Erangel and Miramar, which is the motor glider. The motor glider is the first flying vehicle in PUBG that you can actually operate and shoot out of. It doesn't have any weapons equipped to it, but you can actually shoot out of the passenger seat, much like you can in the other vehicles of PUBG. There are 40 possible spawn points on Miramar and Erangel, but only 10 will spawn for each match. So if you go to one of the potential spawn locations, you have a 1 in 4 chance of it actually being there. It's important to note that the motor glider does not spawn with gas, so you'll have to find a gas can and then fill it up before taking off. In order to take off, what you do is you just hold the right trigger to go forward, left trigger to go backwards, and once you reach 70 kilometers an hour, you can pull back on the left stick to raise up into the air, and you only use the left stick to navigate. Left, right, up and down to control the pitch and roll of the motor glider. Now it doesn't blow through fuel super fast, but it's not very economic either. So if you want to take a joy ride around Erangel or Miramar for an extended period of time, it's wise to find multiple gas cans. I made a video last week going over just how fun these things are, so if you want to check that out, feel free to do so. In my opinion, this is the best thing of the patch. I think it's just going to liven up the game. It's going to give it a new flavor on Erangel and Miramar. If you're not even flying the planes, you can see them overhead and shoot at them, try and knock people out of there. Or, you know, if you want to play it safe, you can just wait for other people to shoot at them. And then now you have all this new information that you wouldn't have had if the motor gliders weren't there. One other quick thing to mention about the motor glider, once you touch onto the ground, if you hold the Y button, you will come to a stop and that will allow you to get out, refuel, heal, switch passengers, do whatever you need to do. And with patch 6.1 comes a new season, season 6 which brings Survivor Pass Shakedown. Much like the previous passes, it has a lot of missions to complete, dailies, weeklies, challenges, season missions, community missions, weapon skin missions, just about everything that all the other passes had, this one does too. Some of the items are definitely pretty cool, so I wanna make sure that I try and get to 100 if I can, but based on how the previous ones went, I don't see a problem with that. And actually, I think we got 15 levels if you completed season five. If you went through that whole pass, you got 15 levels to use towards this pass, so I should have a pretty decent head start. And with season six comes survival title system season six, and your survivor points, or SP, will be soft reset with your performance in Season 5 counting towards your starting SP in Season 6. And at the start of Season 6, you should be receiving those rewards that you earn for Season 5. So make sure to check your inventory. Now there's some gameplay changes in here as well. They made a firing mode change improvement. They added an option in the settings to set second firing modes for ARs and SMGs. If you pick up a weapon that doesn't have auto mode after setting auto as first and single as second, it will automatically set to single. So basically what this does is guns that don't have auto but they have single and burst, you can set either single or burst as your second firing mode option. And for me, I'm gonna set that to single so an M16 and a mutant are always on single fire and not burst. There's some loot balance changes as well. On Erangel, they increased the AR spawn rate by about 20% and they slightly decreased the gas can and handgun spawn. So finding those gas cans might be a little harder than they were before if you needed to find some gas for your glider. And on Miramar, there's a 22% increase to overall loot spawn and an additional 22% increase to the total number of AR spawn. So that's a 44% increase to ARs on Miramar and 22% increase to overall loot. Hopefully we'll see some pretty big changes with that. And they're actually going to change the map selection for this patch. At first they're going to start with Karakin as the featured map and then three random maps for Miramar, Erangel, and Sanok. And then of course you can select Quick Play to just join any of the four maps at random. And if you haven't heard by now, with Karakin being added, Vikindi is actually being temporarily removed. But it is temporary, Vikindi's not going away forever. They did way too much work on that map and it looks too good. I think they're just going to improve it and then reinsert it into the game at a later date. Hopefully it's not too long, but we'll just have to wait and see. And one thing you'll probably notice right off the bat when you pick up a weapon and reload, all the gun sounds have been changed as far as the gun handling. I didn't necessarily think that they were bad before, but the gun sounds seem like an improvement and they seem more realistic. And the last thing I'm going to mention here is in reference to performance. They've added these features to all consoles, so not just PS4 Pro and Xbox One X. There are some performance things that can be benefited for all consoles, and the first one is a huge one, dynamic resolution. If anybody played the PTS and thought, the game looks a little bit better, it's probably because it did. The dynamic resolution adjusts the screen resolution depending on the performance to maintain a stable frame rate. A toggle option to have the feature turned on and off will be added in a future patch, but for right now, 
dynamic resolution will be added. And yeah, like I said, on the PTS, it just seemed like the game looked more clear. I play on the Xbox One X, so it always looks okay for me, but I know a lot of others had said the same thing. They also sharpened post-processing to provide clear visuals, and the ground truth ambient occlusion will produce more realistic shadows. I honestly think that this is going to bring some people back. The smaller map with much higher action and a shorter time for a complete game. It takes about 17 minutes as far as I've seen on average to complete a game. Whereas on Erangel and Miramar you're looking at 30 minutes plus. Plus the addition of the motor gliders is just going to make it even more fun, especially in duos and squads. But as always, let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. Were you able to play the PTS? Are you excited for this to hit the live servers? Make sure to let me know. Also, like the video if you found it useful and subscribe to stay up to date on everything that I publish. You can follow me on Twitter at YTBoris15. But with all that being said, I hope you guys have a good rest of your day. Until next time, I'll see you later.